We are now joined live here in studio with Henry Nyakarundi, the successful and behind... innovative entrepreneur from Rwanda. Le plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henry Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henry Nyakarundi. If we don't extend our hand to the next generation, then we only have ourselves to blame for their failure. I've been in business for 20 years now. I've done business in the States. I've done business in Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, soon in West Africa. So I've acquired a lot of knowledge and experience. One thing that shocked me the most is when I came back was there was no platform to showcase how to do business on the continent. So I decided to take that challenge and created a vlog. If you're looking for content about how to raise money, how to get grants, how to expand your business, how to network, how to build your personal brand, this is what I do. I go into details, I really share my experience in business and building my brand. So 2019 has seen a huge increase in investment in, in Africa. Um, I think there was over 100 companies that raised over a million dollars, uh, which, which was very impressive. So things are moving, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I've done vlogs about that where uh, most of those companies are not African-owned per se, or they, they, they have structure outside Africa. So we need to find a way uh, to increase investment for local entrepreneurs. And I, I'm always being vocal about that because there is no point, there is no point, you know, to have all these international companies or international owners. And, you know, as far as locals, we, we don't find a way to compete. Because if we cannot compete, these entrepreneurial uh, policies and all this entrepreneurial uh, dreams that 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 message that we keep getting will just be for nothing uh, so there has to be an increase in investment to local entrepreneur and as a matter of fact I'm shocked to be honest I'm shocked there's no entity that I found that actually measure uh, out of all this funding how many of them were either African run by African owners from any other African countries, or um, you know, or and the entity structure in Africa, you know, because that's also important. Uh, if, if you structure in London and all those things, and there, there, there's some uh, huge, huge uh, uh, companies or, or, or very successful African entrepreneurs that have structure in London at all, because it's easier to get. Um, public, you know, go to the, to the public auction, as they call it, or, or stock market, uh, then in Africa, and I'll talk a little bit about it later, but uh, raising capital for African entrepreneur has to change, has to increase, and the only way that will happen is to have more angel investors from Africa, more VCs from Africa to understand the African ecosystem, because that's the number one challenge and, and, and problem that I see when I talk to foreign investors, or, or you know, it's always that lack of understanding of the ecosystem. And because they don't understand the ecosystem, they tend to focus on just solution that already exists in a market. They believe that you know uh, will also work um, in our market and also following trend. That's why fintech is so big, because fintech is more of a universal uh, revolution or evolution of, 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 of things, uh, of the financial sector. But when you get to the specific, uh, you know, facilitated access, uh, stuff that we do, uh, it, it becomes very problematic, it becomes very challenging. So that gap has to be filled, or it's just not gonna have an impact. You're still gonna hear all this, you know, buzz, or sound bites 
on, on, on investment increasing increasingly, but who's getting that investment? That's the key question. Man, the, 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 second, the second key point is, is partnership. You know, ARED, they built their whole expansion plan based on partnership, but a very unique partnership where we, we license the solution to local partners. And they can use their own brand, they can do all, you know, they can utilize the way they see fit uh, to adapt to their market. And we just provide a, a technology support system. But partnership is very complicated in Africa. Number one is trust issue. We don't trust each other. We don't. Africans don't trust each other. I don't care what people say. We don't. We still believe that, you know, foreign technology is, going, is much better than a local guy developing. We still have a mindset issue. Um, then it becomes also, we, 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 we have stereotypes from different culture and all those things. I mean, you know, let's be honest. If you go to uh, West Africa, they'll tell you, oh, they're very corrupt and all those things. So you have all this, mindset issues and combined with stereotyping and all those things that make it partnership very very difficult and when i talk about partnership i'm not talking about partnership with big companies uh, or big corporations partnership among smes and even on the local level on the country level partnership among smes is almost non-existent we don't work together you know we we we, we don't find a way to combine our effort I was reading an article not long ago where uh, the amount of, 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 of different trucking companies, small trucking companies that exist in Africa, why they don't come together, or even in countries, in local countries, you always see small companies, small trucking companies with two, three, four trucks, you know, instead of trying to merge and, and build a much bigger organization. And I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine in that industry, and the, and the word trust came about. We don't trust each other. But without partnership and, and lack of access to funding, it's going to be almost impossible, impossible to scale. And this is truly for young entrepreneurs, because I, I gave up my generation. Man. Our generation, we, we jacked up, man. We, we, I've lost hope of my generation. We old school. A lot of us are old school. Those who are not old school, uh, you know, they just they just on another ball game. And a lot of us, we still have dreams. We still work for the for the for the big corporation. Anyway, for the young guys, man, find a way to partner. Especially if you find a company that has a similar technology than you, you know. So instead of you going to that country, opening shop in that country, why don't you combine and talk to that company and say, hey, let's combine effort. You in Nigeria, I'm in Rwanda, we in the fintech space. Instead of me trying to raise money to get to Nigeria and you trying to get to Rwanda, let's build an entity, let's merge. And that's my next topic. Last point and the most important one, man. The last point and most important is exit strategy. Man, Africa, the, the continent of Africa has the least merge and acquisition than any other continent. And an exit strategy in the States, if you look at the States, has been the, the number one um, transfer of wealth than any other transfer of wealth. You, you have companies that get started out of nothing and, and, and Value at a billion dollars. We know valuation, uh, it's a matter of opinion. But as soon as somebody buys you out, that transfer of wealth, it's massive. And not just for one entity or one person. You know, of course, whoever owns the stock get access to that wealth. And that's what we don't have in Africa. Merger, acquisition, exit, going public, is non-existent. It's not developed. That's why you even see a lot of African companies go in London, uh, stock market, uh, to go public, you know, and then to raise public uh, uh, fund from the public because those stock markets are well developed. 
and and uh, and, and and that's that's the sad part about all this. Man. And, uh, and I'm talking about you 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 really hear about any merger among small companies. You 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 really really even hear about acquisition. All those big corporations, the MTNs, the Airtel, the Orange, and all those guys, you know, have the power. Banks, same thing, big banks have the power to make innovation in Africa game changer, you know, to, to be a, a, a cataclysm of, for, for, for innovation by transferring wealth and acquiring, but acquiring company that can bring value to their bottom line. But no, what you find out is very simple. Um, most of those companies develop their own technology. They prefer building it from scratch, even though that solution might exist in the market, they're gonna build it from scratch. I can't tell you how many times I meet big corporations. And, and they tell, they, they, you know, you meet them and they tell you, yeah, yeah, we're developing this solution. And you think about it and say, well, yeah, but this company, this, this startup company already has a solution working. No, 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 we'll, we'll do our own thing. And of course, a lot of them fail because, they, you know, startup innovation mindset is a whole other ballgame that, that big corporation cannot master. That's why the Google, the Facebook acquire companies all the time. But why are we not learning, man? Why are we not learning? And the last thing is, is going public. Our stock market, uh, 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 it's it's so fragmented, just like the 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 the, the African market is so fragmented. You have a stock market in every country, which don't make no sense. To get into a stock market, it, it's okay. Again, we copycats international stock market. Even though the problematic in Africa is different, there's not enough big big companies. There's a huge number of SMEs, but we're not allowing SMEs to go public. Why? Instead of copying models, man, we need to look and have a bottom-up approach and look what's needed uh, and, and look what, what, what's necessary and, and, and then apply for it. Can you imagine? And I'm going to end with this. Man. For those guys on, on, on the, on the uh, higher pay grade than myself, you know, the decision maker, can you imagine if you had a stock market that allowed SME to be part of it and raise public capital, I mean public money, people to be able to invest. Do you know how many of those companies will become big companies instead of us running around trying to raise money outside the continent? You know, can you imagine? Now, of course, you got to put regulation in place, you got to put criteria and all. Ah, no problem, but can you imagine how many? companies you'll be able to lift from SMEs to a big corporation, you know, and, and instead of having 20, 30 stock market in Kenya, Rwanda and all this, imagine if you can combine, we have the East African uh, uh, blocks, West African blocks, can you imagine if you combine it and get one stock market, well developed, well structured and all those things, and I don't think it's hard to say, but hey, I don't know. I'm just a small time, but man, talk about what I see. But um, yeah, man, those are, those are the three criteria is lacking tremendously. And without those, all we're doing is talking about a dream, man.